every single day Do we think about talking to them Do we walk away? What will they think? Will they make fun? Where will they go when the time on earth is done? We gotta be the salt We gotta be the light We gotta get a left or we gotta get a right Trying to be sensitive has got us in a mess Put on your armor and take one in the chest If you want a bad fruit Tell it. We got the truth. We got the truth. It's time to go. It's time to go. We gotta stand up. We gotta stand up. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. If you wanna bear fruit, then you got to move. Everybody's got yeah. to get up and get grooving. Oh, if you know the truth, don't miss your chance. Don't miss your chance. Get on your dancing shoes. If you wanna bear fruit, then you gotta move, move, move. Yeah. Hi guys, Brother Steve here, and I'm back today with our Kid Storm Spirit and our theme verse. And our theme verse, not our memory verse, our theme verse is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We started working on the very first day. I want you guys to say it with me today, okay? So on the count of three, let's start with the address. One, two, three. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Let me explain that to you. That simply means this, if Jesus Christ is a part of your life. Now let's take each word and break it down. Because we've been singing this song and it uses a few different words there. So we'll kind of clarify things right here in case you haven't figured it out yet, okay? The fruit of the Spirit is Jesus Christ living in your life, okay? That's the idea. Jesus Christ living in your life. Okay, you've invited him in, you've asked him to be your savior. Once he is in your life and you let him have all of you, you yield yourself to him, then the fruit starts to grow. And what starts to grow is this, love. You have love for one another, you love your mom and dad, you don't talk back to them, you don't treat others bad. Joy, you're happy. You know, happiness is a choice. When you get out of bed in the morning, you make a choice to be happy, you make a choice to be a grump. Right? But joy comes from knowing Christ as a part of your life. And no matter what happens in your life, when this life is over with, you stand in his presence. That's a joy unspeakable, the Bible says. Peace. With all that's been going on in our world here lately, you know, God can give us peace. Miss Cheryl and I have not worried about what's going to happen to us or what's going to take place. What else? God's in control, and we can trust him. So that gives a peace. The Bible says it passes all understanding. Long-suffering. You can put up with a lot when your little brother, your little sister is aggravating you, your big brother, your big sister is aggravating you, or 
we won't say it real loud, but when mom and dad are aggravating you, you can put up a lot of stuff. You're long-suffering. You have patience, okay? You have gentleness. You treat people kindly. You're not rude. You're not mean. You treat people the way you would want to be treated. Goodness. You do what's good. The Bible says we're to do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith, those who are saved. And then there's faith. faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen, okay? The, the hope of things looked for. The Bible says that we have to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We have to believe that God can do what he said he can do. Faith is not a, a, a sellout word for I'm just going to trust God and I'm going to learn about him. You want to learn all that you can about God so you know what all you can put your faith in. But it's believing in God even though you've never seen God and believing he can do what he said he can do. And then meekness. Not being a bully. Not being rude. Not being the person who has to walk into the room and everybody look at me. I'm the one that's in charge now. It doesn't work that way. The meek person is the one who will take a little quieter route. The person who's not the one to start the fight doesn't mean you can't end the fight. It means you don't start the fight. Okay? Uh, temperance. You ever get mad about stuff and just blow up off the handle? Got a temper? The Bible says we shouldn't be that way. And to be temperate means we can keep that. You can't help it if your personality is one that's that way. You find Peter in the Bible was that way. But you have control of that. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Brother Steve is a redhead. Brother Steve can get a little hot-headed at times. But God has given me control over that. Very few people in this life, and I'm 61 years old, have ever, ever, ever seen Brother Steve get mad. I've been saved for a long time, and God's given me control over that. Against such there is no law. Those are the fruits of the Spirit, okay? Those are the things that are going to grow, and those are all good things. So there's no law stopping those things. They're good. So let's say it one more time today, okay? You ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Galatians 5, 22, and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Guys, memorize those. It only takes about 20 seconds. Great verses to know, and it will help you in your life a lot.
tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. through faith. There's nothing that you can do to earn it. The Bible says we don't get salvation by works or by doing anything. We get salvation because God gave it to us through His Son. So let's say it together one more time. You ready? One, two, three. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. That's an awesome verse. Put your faith in God and He will give you that grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Pretty cool, huh, Dorito? Yes, it is. That's awful. Now, back to you. Who's next? Well, I, I think that's going to be Michelle. Okay. Hi, boys and girls. I am sitting here today with my buddy, Leonard. How you doing, Leonard? Oh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> that's a good boy. Uh, I'm glad you're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, it's been a crazy year. Yes, it has. But it's been a good year. I'm about to starve to death. You're about to starve to death? Uh-huh. Why are you about to starve to death? We haven't been able to travel. Well, no, we haven't been able to travel. Well, therefore, there's no boys and girls that I can eat. You don't eat boys and girls. Well, if they don't know that, would you stop that? Okay. Hey, Leonard, um, with all the craziness that's gone on this year, with all the things that have happened this year, is there anything that King of the Jungle might be able to tell the boys and girls about what it means to not have the fruits of the Spirit or to know that love or joy or peace or the grace that we've been talking about? Is there anything like that at all that you might know about that you could tell them? Oh, absolutely. What is that? Well, I am the King of the Jungle. Yes, you are the King of the Jungle. But you know what? What? There are other animals that can eat me. There's animals that can eat you? Oh, yeah. I don't turn my back on a hyena. Well, yeah, I, I, anybody who's seen uh, The Lion King would understand that. What? N never mind. Okay. Uh, any other animals? Oh, yeah. Elephants? They may forget, but they don't forget how to beat up a lion. They're ferocious. 
Okay, so they're scared of a little mouse, but not you. Well, apparently not. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is there's some animals you're afraid of. I didn't say that. Well, what did you say? If there's going to be peace, we have to learn to get along. Yeah. If there's going to be joy, we have to learn to work together. Well, yeah, I understand that. If there's going to be love, we have to do stuff to love one another. That makes sense. And then you can experience the grace. Because if I love the lion, excuse me, if I love the elephant and I don't attack him, he doesn't try to eat me. Well, I got that. And if I help out the hyena, he doesn't try to eat me. I understand that too. So what you're saying is, with love and joy and peace, we all can experience grace and get along. Uh-huh, we can. Now, there was a little girl named Grace that used to live next door to you. Yes. She got along good with french fries. Would you stop that? You and Dorito are crazy, okay? Leave Grace out of this and let's just leave it alone. And you tell the boys and girls that they should work hard in the fruits of the Spirit and develop that love, that joy, that peace so they can experience the grace. What he said sounded real good to me. And if you'll do that, you will experience it because it's awesome. Can we go get something to eat now? I'm hungry. Yeah, I guess we can. I don't want grapes. <laughs> no, we won't get any grapes. Crackers is nuts. Okay. All right, buddy. Let's go get something to eat. All right? Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Cheryl here. And again, we're going to do the memory verse together for the night. Tonight's memory verse is Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's a nice, short little verse, but it talks about God's grace toward us when we have faith in Him. Let's say that verse together. Ready? Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Good job. Let's say it again, okay? One, two, three. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Let's do it one more time, but let's do it a funny way. Let's hold our hands above our heads and spin in a circle as we say it, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Woo! I got dizzy. Did you get dizzy? Oh my word, the world is spinning for me. But I am so glad that God's word is firm and I never have to worry about things spinning out of control because he is in control of everything. Bye. Hey, Dorito. Hey, what? Are you having a fun time so far? I'm having a blast. I'm enjoying all of this.
that time again for our lesson. This has gone by so fast. We are down to our very last night, our last lesson of Kid Storm Spirit. And we want to share something with you tonight. Now, we, I hope we've gotten it through to you this week that the fruit of the Spirit, these things that we've talked about, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, against such there is no law, these things that we've talked about, I hope you've understood that those only come from the Spirit living inside of you. You must know Jesus as your personal Savior. People don't go to heaven because they just go to church. People don't go to heaven because they live good lives. Good people don't go to heaven. Bad people don't go to hell. Saved people go to heaven. Those who've trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And that's what today's memory verse and today's lesson is all about. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It goes on to say, And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. Brief summary there is, For by grace are you saved through faith. Jesus Christ was sent to die on a cross for our sins. God didn't have to save us. We rebelled against him. He chose to extend grace to us, something we couldn't deserve, couldn't earn, couldn't work for. He chose to give it to us by letting his son die in our place. And by grace, we talked about that, God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. God sent his son to die on the cross so that you could have the riches of heaven, having done nothing at all other than placing your faith in him. Okay? But, now here's the really, really cool part, all right? We talk about this faithfulness. Now, first of all, faithfulness is talking about God. God's faithful, okay? He will save us even though we don't deserve it. He will save us even though we fail him repeatedly. He's still faithful, and he'll do exactly what he said he would do. 
But we're supposed to express that faith too. For by grace are you saved through faith. We put our faith and our trust in Him. I want to show you something today. I've got a friend with me. You guys may remember Ruth. Ruth has traveled with me a lot through the years. And this is one of my doves, Ruth. Okay? Now, immediately, immediately, did you see what happened? I feed Ruth. I give Ruth a place to live. I take care of her. Uh, she doesn't have a want in her life. Not one. And yet, do you see what Ruth continually does? Ruth continually tries to get away from me. Continually. She couldn't live on her own. If she didn't have me and Miss Cheryl, Ruth would die. She's never known what it was to hunt for food like other birds in the wild do. She's lived in a cage all her life. I bought her at a store out of a cage. She has had food put in a box in her cage all of her life. Somebody has cleaned the bottom of that cage out all her life. Somebody's put water in that cage every day for her all her life. Who's that somebody? Well, from the time she was about eight weeks old and on, it's been me or Miss Cheryl. And yet, what does Ruth do? Ruth repeatedly, repeatedly tries to get away from us. Instead of putting faith in the fact that we're going to take care of her, and we're going to watch over her, and we're going to protect her, she keeps trying to run away. Instead of resting and going, okay, Brother Steve and Miss Cheryl can take care of me, why should I bite the hand that feeds me? I should treat them good. I should sit on their finger. I should love them. I ought to give them a kiss every time they come by. I ought to do everything I can to make them happy because they've done everything to keep me alive and help me. But she constantly, constantly keeps trying to get away. Very seldom will you see her exhibit the faith and stick around like she's supposed to. Even with all we've done for her. You know, God's the exact same way with us. He takes care of us. He watches over us. He protects us. He provides for us. He feeds us. He has a plan for our life and steps for us to walk in. And what do we do? We fight against Him. We constantly try to get away. We constantly try running the other direction. We constantly try to do what we want to do instead of accepting through faith what He wants us to do. He wants to give us a home in heaven. He wants to give us joy. He wants us to experience that unconditional love. He wants us to live a life of unconditional love. He wants us to have peace in our life. But we fight against Him continually because instead of placing our faith in Him and trusting Him, we think there has to be something else better that we can run off to, just like Ruth. If we sit here much longer, she's going to try to fly away again because surely there's something better. You've already seen her do it twice. She can't get it through her head that the safest place for her to be is right here with me. And the safest place for you to be is not out doing what you want to do, not living the life that you want, but right in the hand of God, putting your faith in Him even though you don't understand it at times, even though it doesn't make sense at times, saying, okay, God, I will trust you. You provide everything for me. I'll put my faith in you. And I will rest here. And here I'll find peace. Here I'll be fed. Here I'm loved unconditionally. There's nothing she has to do to make Miss Cheryl and I love her. Just be who she is, Ruth. Okay? There's nothing you have to do to make God love you. So why do we keep trying to get away why do we keep running the opposite direction? Why do we keep thinking life there would be better when we can enjoy the hand of God and the love and the joy and the peace and His faithfulness if we just put our faith and our trust in Him? Man, that's the greatest place to be. And none of the stuff that's gone on, none of the pandemic or the virus, none of the riots, none of the craziness of this world bother you because you know you're right in the hand of God, right where He wants you to be. And He's going to take care of you. Put your faith in Him. And if you haven't done that, it's so easy to do. Invite Him into your life. Ask Him to be your Savior, to forgive you of your sins. That, that separates you from God. The lying, the stealing, the cheating, 
the bad thoughts, the wanting to constantly run away and do it your way and say, okay, God, here I am. I give my life to you. Come into my life and be my Savior. If you would do that, what an awesome joy life would be. If Ruth would just quit fighting Brother Steve and Miss Cheryl, you know, she would learn what, how awesome life really could be. Many years ago, I had to buy a new dove. And I traveled a long distance to get the dove. Picked up the dove, brought it back home. When I got to the house, out beside our garage here is a cage in the summertime that we keep them in. It's a big, long cage. I've got plenty of room to move around in there. So when we're home and it's warm, they're inside of there with us. Or inside of there, I mean, not with us, but they're inside of there. So I took this dove out beside the house, opened the cage up, set the dove inside, and when I let go and pulled my hand back out, the dove immediately shot right back out the door before I could even get it closed. I tried hitting it, knocking it down, couldn't. Flew past me and ran it into a lower branch of a tree in the front yard. I walked to the front yard, and just as I reached to take a hold of the dove, it flew away from me again, flew way around and to the very top branch of a tree in the backyard. I looked at that dove, and I said, you know what? Fine. Go live life on your own. You'll be dead in a couple of days, but I'm not chasing after you anymore. I walked back inside the house. I went down to our basement area. I got some food. I got some water. I came walking back outside, and as I came up the steps in the garage and I turned, there sat that dove on the floor in the middle of the garage, breathing really, really heavy, sucking in air. <laughs> and when I walked over and set my hand down, it crawled up into my hand. I didn't hold it or anything. I walked back out to the, the cage. It sat right there in my hand. I opened the door and set it inside. It sat down. You know what that dove suddenly realized that day? I totally believe this. I'm going to die out here. This is a dumb move. I need to go back to where I'll be safe and fed. But I want you to know something today. God's the same way with us. If we want to go do it on our own, he'll let us. But you're going to pay the consequences for it. You're going to suffer a lot. Or you can make up your mind, I'm going to go back to where God wants me to be. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to live for him and watch him work in my life. And if you'll come back to him and give up yourself, say, God, here I am. I'll serve you. You'd be amazed what he'll do in your life. In the presence of his hand, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. If you don't know him, get to know him today. Talk to your mom and dad. Contact us. Call your preacher, your children's your pastor, whatever. Talk to somebody and ask them how you can give your life to God and let him be in your life that you can have that grace by placing your faith in him. I hope you'll do that. Thank you guys. Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Cheryl here. And again, we're going to do the memory verse together for the night. Tonight's memory verse is Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace, are you saved through faith? It's a nice, short little verse, but it talks about God's grace toward us when we have faith in Him. Let's say that verse together. Ready? Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Good job. Let's say it again, okay? One, two, three. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith? Well, it's the end of our night, boys and girls, and I've got a challenge for you. We call it the 22nd challenge because our memory verse found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, takes about 20 seconds to say. Why don't we say that verse together? Ready? One, two, three. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That took maybe about 20 seconds. Are you starting to get this memorized? 
Hmm. Why don't we try it again? This time, see if you can say it without looking the whole time. Maybe you can turn and say it to mom and dad by now. Okay? Let's do it. One, two, three. Hi guys, I hope you all have had a great week. We've had a blast being here with you. And if you get nothing else out of this at all, I hope that you understand that the fruit of the Spirit can only come out of you if the Spirit of God is living in you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's hard to know what love is or joy is or peace or gentleness or faith, no, faithfulness or meekness or temperance because you don't know the one who supplies that. So if you don't know him, get to know him. Invite him into your life and start to read your Bible. And if you do know him, then start praying and asking God to let you grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Read your Bible, learn what you're supposed to do, memorize God's Word, and watch that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, uh, faithfulness, meekness, temperance grow in your life. That's the fruit of the Spirit, and again, such there is no law. Guys, I hope you have, a, have had a great time. Miss Cheryl and I have had a wonderful time, and we look forward to seeing you at your church the next time we're there, okay? Bye-bye. Have a great summer.